Time now for a magician who left the nation spellbound when he won the 10th series of Britain's Got Talent earlier this year. Please welcome the brilliant Lance Corporal Richard Jones. Good evening. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for that warm welcome. I'm super excited to be here this evening. I feel very privileged and very honored to be a part of this incredible show. Now, I need a volunteer, and I'd be very grateful, Your Royal Highness, if you wouldn't mind getting involved. Now, all I'd like you to do, if you'd be so kind, sir, is to think of a two-digit number for me, sir. It's very important that it's not an obvious choice or one that could be easily guessed. And the usher is going to pass you a piece of paper and a pen. What I'd like you to do is nice and clearly on that piece of paper in the square, write a two-digit number for me, sir. And once you've done that, sir, if you could tear that page off and hold it against your chest so I know you're finished. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Your Royal Highness, if you could now screw it up into a ball for us. In just a moment's time, you're going to be throwing that ball of paper into the audience. Ladies and gents in the stalls, if you see the paper coming your way, please try and catch it and hold it in the air so we can see where it has landed. Your Royal Highness, if you wouldn't mind, please throw it anywhere in the auditorium for us. Great throw. Please hold it in the air if you've got it. Thank you very much. Congratulations, you have been personally selected by His Royal Highness himself. Ladies and gents, make her feel welcome as she joins me on stage. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, just while you're getting mic'd, I just want to say that I have always, always wanted to be a part of this show. So I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. I can't believe I'm finally here doing this. If you could make this lady feel welcome once again uh, as she comes up on stage. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Can I stand here? I love your dress. What was your name? Dawn. Dawn, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Richard. Keep that screwed up um, out of sight for now. Because we're going to play a mind game in a minute, but I cannot do this illusion alone. So I'm going to uh, get some of my friends involved. So, ladies and gents, will you please welcome the band of the Household Cavalry. <laughs> Now, we have with us today three March books. These are British Army March books, three volumes, each with 100 different songs in each one. You're going to choose one. Whichever one you choose is the one we use. So just grab one of the March books for us. Good stuff. If you could open it up to the contents page for us. And I'm just going to hold it up so the camera can see. Can you just please confirm for us, Dawn, that every uh, choice is completely different? Yes. Fantastic. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look away for just a second. In a moment, when I look away, you're going to open up the piece of paper. You're going to look at the number that His Royal Highness has written down and remember it. It's very important you've got it the right way around, obviously. I'm going to turn away now. If you can have a look, once you've got that number securely locked in your mind, if you could screw it back up again. Have you got that? Yeah. Fantastic. I'm going to pass you that. I need you to find that number on the page for us. I'm going to look away. Once you've found that number, if you could circle the number and also the piece of music that it corresponds to. Once you've done that, hold it against your chest so that nobody can see. Have you done it? Yeah. Fantastic. I'll just get rid of the pen. Good stuff. Now, you're thinking of a song now which has been chosen from the number that His Royal Highness wrote just a moment ago. Now comes the fun part, because now I'm going to go and try and get inside your mind. What I need you to do is just stare straight into my eyes. Fantastic. Good stuff. Now, what I need you to do, it's very important you don't do anything out loud, but in your mind, keep looping the song, only in your mind. Nothing out loud. Maybe the chorus, maybe the words, whatever you like. Just keep looping it for me. Are you doing that now? Okay, some sort of... Okay, interesting. Uh, Raph, can you play me a D, please? Uh, upper semitone? Maybe, maybe an E. Back down. Keep looping that for me. Okay, I'm not getting much. Um, 
let's try it maybe a lower. I think it might be lower. Ed, would you mind taking over for us? Interesting. Maybe Jaws or something. Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, you know what, Dave, pass that for a second. I've got an idea. Ed, can you slow it down a little bit for us and a little bit longer as well? Here we I got an idea. Does that sound familiar? Yes. What is the piece you chose? James Bond. James piece. Bond! <laughs> But wait, there's more. See, what's interesting is that you chose James Bond at a specific number that was chosen by His Royal Highness. If I open this up and we'll look at that number. So you've chosen number 48. What's interesting about that is I predicted this right from the very beginning. Because as some of you are already aware, I have already been on stage this evening. And while I was on stage, I set a prediction. In fact, the very moment you walked in, sir. Because if we show that very moment of the state trumpeters on the screen, you'll notice that I am actually in amongst them. And just in front of me is a prediction that I made earlier. It is, in fact, a number. And it is 48. Some noise one more time for the band of the Household Cavalry. Thank you so much, Dawn. Thank you, you're a star. Now, I would like to leave you with a message, a story. It's a true story. And to tell this, I'm going to be using a packet of playing cards. Because you see, playing cards have been used by fortune tellers and magicians to tell stories for hundreds of years. As you can see though, my cards this evening are blank on both sides because the story that I'm about to tell you has never been told before. It's a true story about an ordinary day in the life of an extraordinary person. I need you to picture the scene right now. Afghanistan, Helmand province. A mission to clear the most dangerous road in the entire country, which was littered with hidden bombs, which had been taking the lives of soldiers, as well as local men, women, and children for months. Now I need you to picture the bomb disposal operator, whose task it is to find and render safe those hidden explosives, to make it safe once again so that his comrades, as well as the locals, can walk the streets safely once again. Now on this particular day, a bomb was reported in the area, but it's undetectable to the soldier's equipment. So he chose to go by foot in search of clues. But after hours of searching, no bomb was found until he retraced his steps that day and was shocked to find how close he had come and how he'd come to cheat death. Because when he finally uncovered that bomb, it was just an inch away from where he'd been stood an hour before, an inch from death. He was one of the lucky ones because he made it home. Not everyone did. The reason this story is so poignant to me is because I know this soldier. This soldier is my big brother. And tonight I would like to dedicate my performance to him alongside the brave men and women of the British bomb disposal teams for their immense bravery and dedication in keeping us safe abroad and at home because they put their lives on the line to save others. A true trait of a hero. And my brother, he is just one who stands beside many, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, a band of brothers. So tonight I would like to honor those men and women, sailors, soldiers, and airmen, past and present, of Her Majesty's Royal Navy, Army, and Air Force. And I feel very privileged this evening to introduce you on stage on behalf of the British Bomb Disposal Unit, my brother and his team.